death moral. You won't find a name more feared, monstrous, heinous, abominable, loathsome, villainous, and despicable within the parameters of the Star Wars galaxy. Just one glance at this force-sensitive Dothormidian Zabrak Dark Lord of the Sith was enough to ignite a hurricane of dismay within the pit of your stomach. Each individual sharp, jagged horn on his head metaphorically speaking, shredded and tore the courage of some of the galaxy's most courageous citizens. Newt Gunray could barely stand the sight of him when he made a brief appearance during a conference call with Darth Sidious, and Obi-Wan was perplexed by the sight of him on Tatooine and had to ask the question, what is it? His red appearance the result of an oral bath conducted as a result of Sith rituals, and his tattoos applied by Darth Sidious demonstrating his full dedication to the dark side of the Force, are iconic. But so is the fact that he was swiftly sliced in half about the waistline, courtesy of Obi-Wan, during a brawl on Abu. This duel between Qui-Con and Obi-Wan was the moment Darth Maul had desired and prepared a lifetime for. Maul felt that all of his experiences, knowledge, and instincts had converged on this day and this world for the ultimate test, to prove himself worthy as a true Seth. But it wasn't to be. Just when Darth Maul thought that he had achieved victory, Obi-Wan leapt out of the reactor shaft and summoned Qui-Con's lightsaber with the Force, inflicting a lethal blow, sending Maul plummeting in two pieces. Despite this, Darth Maul surpassed the seemingly insurmountable odds and survived. Utilizing his seething hate augmented by his indomitable will to live, he reached out with the Force and grabbed hold of an airbend to break his plunge into the shaft's darkness, forcing us as Star Wars fans to ask the question, how would he be able to pee and poo? Having fallen into a container, he was taken to the planet Lothamranor, and through the junkyard world, he pulled himself into a blacking out. However, a mysterious anaconda named Morley wrapped Morl and his coils and brought him into the caves of the planet, where he would spend 12 years. According to lore, when Darth Morl first arrived on Lothamranor, he encountered insects the size of his arms and managed to crush one with his own left hand before using his teeth to rip its legs off, and slowly he started eating. And for 12 years he occupied the hidden cave, where he ate only small animals that came to the cave, and were caught by his snake-like friend Morley. So how did he digest and expel his sustenance? Well, there is no exact lore on the matter, but there are a number of strong theories that are plausible. Firstly, when Maul was first brought to the cave, he discovered a six-legged, arachnid-like cybernetic apparatus that he used to replace his lower body. This was constructed of metal and electronic wires which propelled him around. A cybernetic replacement was any biomechanical device used to replace body parts, ranging from internal organs to limbs. These prosthetic replacements were connected to organic tissue via a complex synth net and neural interface which provided the recipient with control or sensation. So more spider-like cybernetic apparatus could very likely have contained the digestive system requirements needed for expelling his cave meals. However, in the possible situation that the cybernetic apparatus didn't have self-contained digestive functions for urination and excretion, I discovered another plausible theory. Darth Maul was an angry man, filled with the darkest aspects of the Force. For 12 long years, his anger burned to have revenge on Obi-Wan. Thus, perhaps he didn't actually need to eat and drink much food, because he continued to feed on rage and passion as his sustenance. Therefore, he didn't have to expel feces and urine from his body. And if he did, the constant state of anger and desire for vengeance acted as digestive acids himself, so to speak. So this constant energy from his rage processed and dissolved the food that he did from time to time eat. After Darth Maul was discovered in the cave by his long-forgotten brother or press, he was introduced to Mother Talzan, who replaced his spider-like cybernetic legs into a more humanoid form from the destroyed bodies of super battle droids, which don't actually look to be equipped with bodily waste mechanisms, but if there wasn't, I still stand by the theory that he could have converted his feces into pure, undiluted hatred through the power of the dark side, with the ultimate goal to inflict revenge for his inability to organically pee and poop. And as a matter of fact, he did get that opportunity once again during the Clone Wars, but with the help of his side ventures, Obi-Wan escaped, and Darth Moore's ever-burning rage that facilitated the role of stomach acid continued on. 
That's not to say Darth Moore didn't have the opportunity to kill Master Kenobi though, but perhaps that's why every opportunity Darth Maul gets to kill Obi-Wan, he never actually follows through with that, because he knows that he relies upon that burning rage to facilitate the role of stomach acid, as he doesn't have the bodily functions to dispose of his sustenance, and keeping Obi-Wan alive keeps that rage burning. I mean there were many times when he seemingly had an opportunity to inflict the ultimate revenge. Anyways, let me know what theory you guys think is more plausible in the comment section below. Darth Maul only has himself to blame for his lack of lower body. All he needed to do was drop his lightsaber down onto everyone, and that would have been the end of that. But in utter arrogance he continued to torment and prematurely bask in victory. Maul's failure was his mental miscalculations, not physical ones but his physical limitations would hinder him for the rest of his life. I shall see you all in the next video, and remember, be happy. We lost the transmission, sir.